Rode announced a number of amazing new products this week, um, and I was really excited about all of them until I uh, was then a little bit disappointed about one of them in particular. So I'll explain all in due course, but uh, there is some really great stuff coming up uh, from Rode. So let's start off with their new wireless mic offering, which is the new Wireless Me. Uh, same format as the Wireless Go that you're probably familiar with, the Wireless Go 2 as well. Uh, a couple of differences with this one. Um, first of all, they've uh, apparently simplified some of the uh, sort of setup procedures, and then also the uh, quality that you're going to get of it out of the box. Uh, another difference, though, is it also has, at uh, this time, a mic on the receiver as well as the transmitter. So it means if you've got it mounted on top of a camera, for example, uh, then it will be able to uh, pick up uh, both parties that way. So very similar there. I personally don't use the Rode Wireless Go, uh, so I can't uh, sort of comment on <laughs> how that is or whether I'm looking forward to this. I tend to be sitting here in my, uh, my office, don't I? Anyway, uh, next up, though, is relating to the Rode Wireless Go 2. There have been some improvements made to that as well which are going to come with a firmware update uh, and one of those uh, updates is now you don't actually need the software on the Mac to uh, basically transfer files they're not in a proprietary format uh, they are now just basically WAV files that you can just uh, connect and drag straight onto your desktop or off the device which apparently was a much asked for uh, feature. Uh, the other thing related to the Rode Wireless Go 2 so the uh, the older uh, model is that they are also introducing a, a charging case so there's a number of different uh, manufacturers of wireless mics that do come with charging cases so I think they're uh, just sort of playing catch up a little bit here uh, but it does look a really nice form factor if you are if you are using these to have them uh, both protected but then also the ability to charge them uh, directly within the case and then also it having a battery to be able to uh, charge them whilst they are in the case as well. So a nice little addition here. Uh, when it comes to the Rode Wireless Go, if you are someone who uses it with the Rodecaster, so I've got some other wireless mics that I use, and there's a... a, um, a XLR adapter that you can get from Rode that allows you to then plug the transmitter or the receiver rather into your Rodecaster so that then you can use it that way. Well, apparently there is a little hidden feature within the Rodecaster Pro 2 that is going to be unlocked in a uh, forthcoming firmware update imminently, uh, which is actually going to give you the ability to pair with a transmitter um, from uh, just within the Rodecaster. So you're just basically going to pair the, uh, the wireless mic directly to your Rodecaster. So this may be something that pushes me over the edge to to actually go ahead and uh, buy a uh, wireless mic from Rode. Uh, there you go. That's probably their intention, isn't it? So that's just a nice little feature. I do know a lot of people who use their wireless mics with the Rode, so just being able to pair it directly like that, I think, is a great little uh, feature. Also, for Rodecaster Pro 2 users, another announcement um, <laughs> is this bag that allows you to uh, carry it and uh, several mics and uh, all the accessories if you are out and about with your Rodecaster. Once again, I'm pretty static where I am, but I certainly can see if you're on a uh, mobile podcast studio going out and about and interviewing people then this is a nice little uh, ad addition to the road lineup the next main massive announcement though is uh well <laughs> i'll just show you shall i it's a little mini Rodecaster, the Rodecaster Duo. I think that this is an awesome device. And the reason is, uh, basically, it's exactly the same as the Rodecaster Pro 2, except, as you can see, it's smaller. Uh, it's only got two XLR inputs rather than four, um, but it has still got all of the same functionality in terms of those uh, two USB cables going into your computer that actually gives you three USB channels, all of the same processing and things like that that you've got on it. And I'll just play that again because there's another couple of things about this. Uh, first of all, it's got the uh, little uh, jack that you might have noticed there on the front just underneath the sound pads and uh, that's basically a TRRS so right there just at the very front there uh, a TRRS cable and that allows you to plug in your headphones directly into the front if you want you've still got the connection on the back uh, but it's also being the TRRS, it means that you can also use headsets with a mic. So in actual fact, although you've lost one of the mic ports on the back, uh, you may well be able to use a headset that is then, uh, well, you can use a headset that has then got a mic sort of integrated into it. Uh, and you can apparently apply all of the same sort of processing to that as you would with the others. So why am I so excited about this? Well, it's because the majority of people that I talk with on consultation calls and the, the, the types of people that I'm working with uh, tend to be more people who are using the Rodecaster as a device for um, either their solo, uh, basically just recording themselves, in which case only one mic coming in, um, but then also using uh, the Rodecaster with applications like Zoom, uh, Ecamm Live, uh, Teams, and so on. And they're using this to do the audio routing, adding the mix minus. Well, this in effect gives you all of that functionality. And certainly for the um, smart pads on the side there, so the Rodecaster Pro 2 has obviously got um, eight, whereas this has got just six. 
but it's not something that I actually use a lot. I certainly don't apply any of the voice effects, the robot boy voice and things like that. Um, I do use it for sort of intro music for when I'm recording my podcast and so on, but I'm not really a heavy user of those smart pads. So losing two of them doesn't really make much uh, difference to me. Um, I do use on the back, I've got one mic coming in. I sometimes have my wireless mic going in as well, but guess what? You can now pair a wireless mic directly without the need for that. Um, and then I'm also doing something a little bit funky, bringing in a stereo pair into the back from my computer but that is by far uh, not <laughs> not normal and not necessary. So what this actually is then is it is for me almost like the ideal device for somebody who is using the Rodecaster for uh, content creation as a solo content creator, uh, but then also using it for communication on platforms like Zoom and things like that. So I think that this is going to be a big seller, to be honest. And there is no official word on the Rode website. However, I did see on another website, which I'll link to in the description, that the uh, the price of this is going to be five hundred dollars thereabouts, four hundred and ninety five or whatever it is, just <laughs> thereabouts. Uh, so I will link to that. But again, this is not coming directly from Road, so I don't know if that's been formally announced. But what they have said is that it will be available um, this month, or at least that's what this other site says. So uh, that's the sort of timeline for it. And I've got to say, if I was right now trying to choose between uh, the Rocaster Pro Two or the Rocaster Duo. The Rocaster Duo pretty much will be doing everything that I need it to do. So uh, that is where my sort of choice would go in, on this. Uh, I will obviously be getting one to review because, you know, I'm, I'm doing it for you. I've got to do it. <laughs> so, uh, but I will definitely be uh, testing one out. But yeah, in terms of just that functionality, having everything else that the RCP2 uh, has got, the Rocaster Pro 2, I just think it's awesome. And I also want to uh, share that with uh, some of you, or at least one lucky winner, because I am doing a giveaway as well. Uh, so you can find a link to that down in the description take one tech.io slash giveaway uh, and i will be uh, running this all throughout uh, may and then basically at the end of may i'll uh, close the uh, the entries and then i'll do a draw on my live stream first uh first friday saturday in uh, in june so definitely uh, enter for your chance to win that. And uh, yeah, don't know what exactly the availability is going to be, but as soon as the uh, the entries are closed, the order will be going in and you'll get it as soon as uh, as soon as soon is uh, humanly possible. <laughs> so definitely enter that. Uh, the other thing, by the way, that you get by entering or the winner will get um, is also uh, complete access to my uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 Masterclass. So this is the course that I created uh, to basically cover all of the, uh, the advanced audio routing and things like that of Rodecaster. Rodecaster. Um, so my, my reason for creating the course was that I think a lot of people get the Rodecaster. They look at some of the, uh, you know, the advanced audio processing that you do have on board, such as the compressor and all of these kinds of things, the noise gate. But then you come into looking at all the settings and often it is a little bit of a mystery in terms of what all these things are doing. And so often people are kind of tweaking things without necessarily knowing what they're doing. So the Rodecaster Pro 2 Masterclass is over 100 lessons. Um, and uh, one particular section, which, as I say, was really the motivation for doing it, um, was the advanced audio so here it talks about uh, you know gain attack release uh, targeting specific frequencies understanding high pass filter and these sort of things and then looking at all these different uh, um terms and terminology that you need to know to really get the most out of the Rodecaster. Now, this is the Rodecaster Pro 2 Masterclass. However, I will be updating it to also include the Rodecaster Duo because it totally makes sense. It's essentially uh, the same device in a smaller form factor uh, with just a couple of the uh, mics missing. So I'm really, really excited about the Rodecaster Duo. Uh, I think it's going to be a great, uh, a great a great product, and I hope that one of you uh, lucky people watching uh, wins that uh, prize as well. Um, so you can find out more about the Rodecaster Masterclass, of course. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you just want to go ahead and take a look at that straight away. Uh, incidentally, you can also get uh, get hold of the Rodecaster Masterclass as part of the Take One Tech Academy. So this basically includes access to all of my courses, beginner's guides, masterclasses, and various other different things, monthly workshops, uh, Q&As, coaching sessions, and various other different things so i'll leave a link to all of that in the description as well uh, and you can check that out at your leisure if you so wish anyway let's carry on with the announcements because there was another announcement uh, another great product that i got so excited about um just because it looked so cool and let me just show you what that is it is this it is another little mini <laughs> mini uh road device that looks very similar obviously to the the aesthetic of the uh, the rocaster uh, duo and rocaster pro 2 and this essentially though has 
got, as you may have seen, a small little uh, button on the front that had a picture of a camera. And that intrigued me when I saw these initial sort of teaser shots of it. Um, and then, yeah, sure enough, it is in fact um, an HDMI capture card as well. So you can see what you've got on the back there in terms of connect, uh, connectivity. You've got one single um, uh, jack in the back for the microphone. And that, again, is these Neutrik um, combo jacks that basically allow you to plug in either an XLR cable um, or a, a jack from either a, an instrument or something like that. Uh, you can also see on the back there, it's got two little headphone sockets right next to that, uh, that input. And you'll notice that one of them is headphones and the other one is one of those headset jacks as well so that means that again you've effectively got two inputs there in terms of the microphone um, you've then got two hdmi sockets on the back and that is for um, uh, hdmi capture obviously uh, and that is going to be for either um, 4k at 30 frames per second or 2k at um, 60 frames per second and there is also a pass through there so that means that if you are capturing your screen for example uh, you would have the uh, the input going into the in and then the throughput going through to your actual screen and it's basically capturing that uh, on the way through and that is what I was really intrigued by and what I was interested in because I do have uh, instances where I'm basically hooking up two or three computers and I want to be able to capture the HDMI uh, coming to one of my monitors so that then I can bring that in to Ecamm Live for presentations and all of that kind of stuff. So that is where th this really sort of piqued my interest a little bit. Uh, and I was thinking that this was going to be uh, something that I would be uh, adding into my setup. Um, I'll come on to why I probably won't now. Uh, but uh, next to that, though, we do have uh, two USB channels. So um, I'm not entirely sure if that's effectively giving us three channels, as it does with the um, the Rocaster Pro 2 and the Rocaster Duo, um, or whether it is just those two channels. Uh, it may be that it's just for connecting to two computers. I'm not entirely clear on that myself just at the moment. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it is a great little uh, looking device. Uh, you've got phantom power button just there on the uh, the back. So um, what else um, can I say about it? And why am I uh, a little bit disappointed with it? Well, the key is that little uh, thing there that says X. So it's this thing, this little logo on the front that says Streamer X. That is the name of this device. And it is part of the Rode X um, sort of brand. And if you go to Rode.com, uh, that's one website, but they've also got a Rode X website. And that is for all of their Rode X uh, branded things. And the thing about it, though, uh, which is a little bit disappointing, is uh, look not on Mac Insight and that is because um, their um, software that you use to control this with um, is called uh, what's it called Unify <laughs> uh, which is somewhere on here if I scroll up to uh, where the place where it is on the website uh, here it is somewhere here that this little app that is on the screen there um, that is their Unify software and effectively what that is it's kind of like a software version of the Rocaster so it's uh, you know you can mix things you can apply effects you can see all the little um, uh, icons here which are very similar to the uh, the, the um, buttons that you have on your stream deck these sorry <laughs> on your roadcaster the uh, the smart pads uh, so you have the same sorts of things here in the app uh, and effectively as i say it is a software version of the uh, the roadcaster the problem it's PC only. And I got so excited when they announced this uh, Unify software um, a few months ago. And I heard the announcement and I was waiting and waiting to download it. And I downloaded it. And then sure enough, uh, there's no DMG Mac file <laughs> for installation. It is um, PC only. I don't know if this is something that is going to change imminently because it looks a really nice bit of software to do, you know, basically mixing as you would want to do on the Rocaster, but just having it on the desktop. Um, it's really cool. It's just a real, real shame uh, that it's not available on the Mac because what that means is, uh, unfortunately, uh, this little device, uh, what it says is you can apply all of the effects to the mic going in uh, using the Unify software. And the Unify software is just not available on the Mac. So uh, yes, alas, <laughs> this lovely little device, I'll probably not be, uh, not be biting the bullet on one of those uh, because effectively you can't apply any processing directly from the uh from from the device as i understand it it probably just would just pass through into some other application but as they specified in their video unless there's uh, something which they didn't mention uh then yeah it's not uh, not looking good for that one i'm afraid never mind let's move on <laughs> let's hope that they uh they bring that out for the pc in uh, within time 
But next up, though, is another pretty cool device. And this is the um, PodMic USB. And as the name suggests, with the USB in the name, it does now also have USB connect uh, connectivity. And in fact, this mic that I've got here is the Shure MV7. And the reason why I bought this mic originally was it was before I had a Rodecaster. It was when I was first starting out in my studio. And I wanted to get something that had some sort of like, upgradability, as, as, it, as it were. Um, so this Shure MV7 has both an XLR and a USB on the back. So for the first eight, 10 months, nearly a year, I guess, I was actually using it over USB. Um, and then when I got the Rodecaster, I just swapped out and put in the XLR cable and that went into the, the Rodecaster. So effectively, this is something very similar because on the back, um, it's got the same sorts of setup. It's got a, uh, an XLR cable, a USB cable. It's also got a uh, little headphone socket you can see there for um, monitoring. So you can plug your monitors directly into your headphones, directly into the back of the, uh, the device there. Um, and that means that you've got zero latency for monitoring um, from when you are using it over USB. And there's a little volume knob on there as well. Now, this one does say that you can use it with their, um, you can apply processing, sorry, to it if if you have got a, um, uh, if you're using it over USB, if it is plugged into either the Unify software, oh dear, for Mac users, but fortunately it does also say uh, Road Central as well. So I'll be really interesting to see what that looks like in terms of the sort of a way that you can adjust the sound and apply that processing, because given that it's not available on the Streamer X, uh, but they're saying that you can use it with Road Central on, which is Mac and PC, on the, um, on the, the pod mic, then it'll be just interesting to see how that is uh, that is implemented. But yes, apparently you can apply uh, sort of processing to it that way. The other thing which is really interesting is when using over USB, you can actually plug it directly into one of the USB sockets on the back of the Rodecaster. So um, some people don't realize that the uh, USB sockets on the back, you can also plug phones and things like that into them to, to actually connect with a phone over the uh, specifically the second USB on the Rodecaster Pro 2. So they're saying that this microphone can actually plug directly into one of those. Now that actually means that that Rodecaster Duo suddenly, instead of feeling like, oh, well, it's actually now got only two connections for a microphone, technically you've still got four because you could be plugging a pod, uh, two pod mics into the regular sockets. You could then plug a pod mic in to one of the USB sockets on the back, and then you still got that, you know, technically headset socket. So I know headsets are a little bit dodgy as uh, as it goes in terms of you know high quality audio potentially, um, but nevertheless, it still just does add a little bit more to the uh, connect uh, connective. <laughs> Connectivity. There we go. Got it out in the end. So I do think that this is a really cool mic. And certainly when I was looking at um, buying a microphone initially, and I went with the this one, uh, I did look at the pod mic at the time, which was only USB. I looked at the uh, um, another <laughs> road one, I forget which it is they've got another USB one in about the same price range. Um, so to have a combo one like this, uh, and like the uh, uh, the pod mic USB, uh, I think certainly would have been something that I would have considered um, back then. Uh, a great addition, the pod mic. I understand the price of that is going to be, uh, so I believe, around about 195 something like that, 199 And then the Streamer X, which we looked at, uh, sorry, Mac fans, um, is uh, 399 apparently, according to this third-party site. So what I'll do is I'll leave a link to all of these different resources and things like that that I've gathered this information from for you to take a look at. And uh, if you want to come and join the discussion about this, uh, there'll be plenty more talk about it over in the uh, Take One Tech Discord, so I'll leave a link to that down below as well. In the meantime, for those watching on the replay, which is all of you because this isn't live, <laughs> I'll leave a link to some of my other Rodecaster videos over here. Thanks to all of my channel members and thanks to everyone at being a member of the Academy. It is uh, great to have all of your support and I'll see you all very soon.